Good morning, everyone. We are going to get started around 830. Thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, everyone. We're going to get started in about 10 minutes.
Good morning, everyone. We're going to start right on time. Welcome to the City Planning Commission meeting. Thank you for joining us this morning. Today is August 13th, 2020. The time is 8.30 a.m. on the dot. Commissioners participating are David Ambrose, Caroline Cho, Helen Learn, Karen Mack, Veronica Padilla Campos, Dana Perlman, Vahid Korsand, and I'm Samantha Millman, City Planning Commission President. In conformity with the Governor's Executive Order N-2920 of March 17, 2020, and due to ongoing concerns over COVID-19, the City Planning Commission meeting will be conducted via Zoom webinar and telephonically. You may also join us as we live stream on YouTube by searching planning the number four LA and clicking on the videos tab. The City Planning Commission meeting can be listened to by dialing 213-621-2489 or 818-904-9450. Please note that this meeting is being recorded. Therefore, we ask that you please state your name before you speak. Audio for this meeting will be available online within two business days. We will be following the agenda in order this morning. Agendas and meeting presentations are available online through the planning website. The link to the presentations can be located at the top of our agenda. We'll be asking the presenters to be very descriptive about the slides they are referencing this morning. Members of the public can now view this meeting online by clicking on the Zoom link located on the first page of our agenda. If you wish to speak before this commission, you may do so two ways. Please call 669-900-9128 and use meeting ID number 968-839-95963 and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted for the participant ID. The last four digits of your phone number will be used to call you for your turn to speak. When you hear you are unmuted on your phone line, you may begin to provide your public comment. Please press star nine on your phone when public comment is open for the item or items that you wish to speak on. The commission office will then call out the last four digits of your phone number when it is your turn to speak. You will hear a message that states you are unmuted. Again, please state your name clearly and proceed with your comment. When your time is up, you will be remuted. Please be mindful of background noise while you're speaking so we can hear you very clearly. Your time is being monitored remotely this morning by Denise Otero, so you will not have access to see how much time is left. That means you have to keep track of your time on your own. You will be remuted by staff when your time is up. So that is if you are calling in by phone. If you wanna access by Zoom this morning, please click on the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen once public comment is open for the item or items that you wish to speak on. The commission office will call your name when it is your turn to speak. You will see a prompt that states the host would like you to unmute. At this point, you will have to click on unmute for us to hear you. Please note that while commissioners, planning staff, city attorney and presenters will be visible to everyone, members of the public giving public comment will not be visible. Please note that the public comment period is for any item that is not on the agenda today that is within the jurisdiction of this commission. If you represent a certified neighborhood council and you have a written resolution or community impact statement, please submit it at this time to CPC, like City Planning Commission, CPC at lacity.org. If you have any day of meeting submissions, please submit it at this time to cpc at lacity.org. Compliant day of submissions can be viewed in the shared drive by clicking on the link located at the top of the first page of this agenda. If you would like to be added to the interested parties list to receive determination letters for any of the agenda items from today's meeting, please email cpc at lacity.org with your contact email or mailing address information and the case number associated with the item. Please understand that this is still a new format for our meeting. We thank you in advance for your patience as staff may need a few extra minutes to organize callers. So with that, let's start with the uh, director's report. Planning Director Vince Bertoni, do we have a report this morning? Uh, yes, thank you, President Millman and members of the City Planning Commission. Vince Bertoni, Director of Planning 
this morning for the director's report, just would like to give the commission an update on our community plan program. We've met some milestones for two community plans recently this last week. One is the Hollywood community plan. And then the other is the downtown Los Angeles community plan. What I'd like to do is have for uh, an update to turn it over to our deputy director for community planning, Shauna Bonston. Hello and good morning, everyone. Yes, we have um, an important milestone that the downtown community plan saw last week with the release of our draft plan and it includes updates to a number of supporting documents and materials. Um, just so you know, generally the plan embodies a sustainable, equitable, and inclusive future for the city and region's urban core. So this is really important work. Um, it's also the first of our new community plans to apply our new zoning structure developed as part of the comprehensive update to our new zoning code for the first time since 1946. So big endeavors here. Um, the release included, uh, just so the commission knows, a series of updates and more detailed materials that have been informed by community uh, feedback. And, you know, this is really just continuing the beginning of more input. So changes and improvements are ongoing to the plan. This release is simply broadening the opportunity for public review. The team will continue to work with the dozens of organizations that and groups that have been um, engaged so far and expand those to small group discussions as well. Uh, we expect a couple more update releases, uh, each in advance of both the public hearing and the CPC hearing uh, coming in subsequent months. And as for next steps, next month we anticipate releasing the draft EIR. Um, and again, uh, for uh, anticipating public hearing in December and CPC perhaps in January, that's very dependent, of course, on uh, COVID lifestyles and feedback. Um, and then as Vince mentioned, we also had an important milestone for the Hollywood community plan. We released an update to the CPIO, which is our implementation uh, document uh, that came out on Friday. So um, uh, lots of positive work from the team. I'm available for questions, as is Craig Weber, who oversees, uh, he's a principal city planner who oversees that geography. Thank you so much. Commissioners, do you have any questions? David Ambrose? Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yes, we yeah. can. Awesome. Just a general comment, not, not a question, and I'm sure it's already in the hopper. But in our review of the transit plan on the expo line, we discussed just maximizing the density uh, available by studying it in the IR so that policymakers like ourselves are not hamstrung, which I felt earlier in other processes. So as we just began to consider different areas, while, while an area, quote unquote, may want to be preserved for single family homes, just want to ensure that we're not being hamstrung by those decisions on the front end so that we can study and look at things in the IR that allow us the full tools as policymakers to uh, help create a vision with input. Yes, thank you for that, uh, Commissioner. Um, oh, am I cutting you off? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yes, we have heard that before, and you will be pleased to know that all of our community plans do uh, review and include a, a broad range of outcomes so that we are not restricting decision makers to simply what is the proposal before them. Thank you, Shauna. The next question is from Helen Learn. Thank you, Shauna, for the update. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask about um, perhaps the impact of the racial equity statement that the Pine Department has shared and how has that been and continue to be incorporated into both the Hollywood and downtown community plan? Yeah, also excellent question. And that is still new and evolving. But um, as I've mentioned before in the past, we are doubling down and expanding our efforts to really make sure that our outreach is inclusive. We will be working closely with uh, Faisal Roble and his team um, for uh, on the Office of Racial Equity to make sure that we are outreaching in comprehensive ways. But I will also say that the plan, the substance of the plan, we are looking at it through that lens. A number of the um, amended and updated policy statements speak to that being very inclusive of the number of different communities, particularly in the downtown area. I think downtown is an interesting uh, first case study in the sense that it is both a regional draw, but has a number of very diverse and interesting neighborhoods within it that we wanna make sure to uplift. Thank you. Any other questions, commissioners? 
Seeing none. Uh, thank you very much for that report. Is there anything else to report, Vince? That's it, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we will move on to the Deputy City Attorney, Amy Brothers. Do you have anything to report? Uh, hi, no, I don't have anything to report today. Thank you. Commissioners, please take a look at your advanced calendars and note any planned absences. At this time, do we have any commissioner requests? Seeing none, please note that each of you has been assigned a specific pre-CPC briefing date on the advanced calendar. This is our opportunity to review the caseload together. Please let Cecilia know if you cannot participate on your assigned date. And please let Cecilia know if you can uh, of any planned absences. The minutes of July 23rd, 2020 were emailed to all commissioners to review. Um, I assume that everyone has had an opportunity to review the minutes. If you have changes or a motion to adopt, please raise your hand at this time. Caroline Cho. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Do we have a second? I will second that, Samantha Millman. Cecilia, we have a first and a second. Will you please call for the vote? Good morning, Commissioner Cecilia Lamas for the record. Commissioner Cho? Yes. Commissioner Millman? Yes. Commissioner Ambrose? Yes. Commissioner Learn? Yes. Commissioner Mack? Yes. Commissioner Padilla Campos? Yes. Commissioner Perlman? Yes. Commissioner Corsan? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you. Um, before we move on, one item of commission business was that at our last hearing, we discussed the creation of an equity subcommittee. And I am pleased to report that um, Karen Mack will be chairing the equity committee alongside um, Helen Learn and Caroline Cho. So I look forward to seeing the work of this subcommittee. I know that one of the things that they will be working on as an initial work product is a program that discusses planning through an equity lens. Um, and they will be working closely with Faisal Roble, who is the chief equity officer of the department um, to come up with that program. So ladies, I know you will do phenomenal work. Um, and I look forward to seeing the work uh, that comes out of this committee. Karen Mack? Uh, Ooh, let's try that again. Okay, there we go. Um, I just want to um, thank you so much, uh, President Millman, for establishing this uh, committee. Um, as we all know, planning has such an, uh, a huge impact on our communities. And I know that we all are really passionate about these issues. And so to really dig into it is an opportunity for the commission to really um, deepen our understanding of what equity really means in this context. Uh, one of the interesting things that's happening on Friday, um, Commissioner uh, Gail Kennard, who um, is on the Cultural Heritage uh, Commission, has reached out to uh, Faisal to uh, set up a meeting with all of the African American uh, planning commissioners. So that's happening tomorrow. So that should be a very interesting um, complement to the conversation that we're having here. Um, there's also been an ongoing conversation with all of the African American commissioners in the city initiated by the mayor's office and um, continued by Commissioner Mike Davis, who's one of our um, public works commissioners. So there's a lot of conversation in the city and I think one of the concerns that um, the, uh, has been expressed in the uh, in the across you know departments is really how to uh, have influence as a commission uh, as a commissioner and so you know I, I really look forward to working with you all uh, in partnership to and, and with the you know fantastic staff that we have at planning to really think about how to 
um, both develop policies that are meaningful and practical um, and, uh, and really uh, are embraced by the staff, you know, throughout the organization so that we can really move forward um, on this agenda. So, so uh, thank you so much. And uh, Caroline and Helen uh, can't wait to get to work. So uh, onward. Thank you, Karen. Um, it appears that we do have a member of the public who would like to speak on this item. Uh, Cecilia will you, or Marcos, will you please go ahead and call out our speaker? Thank you, Madam President. This is Marcos Godoy for the record. Never mind, they took off their hand. Okay, great. Um, then we will go ahead and move forward in our agenda. Hold on one moment. Item number two is neighborhood council presentations. If there are any neighborhood council representatives with a resolution or community impact statement regarding an item on the agenda who wish to speak on behalf of your neighborhood council on any items on the agenda, please submit your statement at this time by emailing cpc at lacity.org. Certified neighborhood council representatives for items related to projects on the agenda will have an opportunity to speak when the item is called. Item number three is general public comment. This period is your time to address any matter that is not on our agenda this morning. Um, if you have a public comment for any item not on the agenda, please press star nine or press the raised hand I, uh, icon. We also, it looks like, have a comment from Veronica Padilla Campos. So I'm gonna go to Veronica first and then we will open public comment. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just want to make a comment in regards to public comment, and I'm not sure if this is the right time, but I have been hearing reports from multiple stakeholders that they um, have called in to do public comment, but their names were never called. Um, I know this can be an easy process. It's a new process, but um, as we have more of these meetings, I feel like we, we need to get better and ensure that we reassess this process to make sure that community is given the opportunity to give input and that it's functional and accessible and that we really create the process for people to give feedback and also for the proper translation. I, I'm not sure how that's happening. Um, if someone can, can tell me a little bit about that uh, um, now or some point and um, Samantha, I know you do a really good job of, of explaining the process for calling in. We do do it in the beginning of the meeting, but I think it's important for us to do it a couple of times throughout the meeting as a, as a reminder and, and give some time for people to either write down the number or whatever it is. But I, I'm just, I, I have been a little concerned about the public um, comment process, especially hearing from different stakeholders. So, um, I wanted to make sure I, I, I pointed that out. Thank you, that is troubling. Um, I know that we do give instructions with each item to either press the raised hand button if you are accessing via Zoom or press star nine if you are accessing by phone. And when folks do that, we see them. In fact, I believe all of you can see them in the attendees section, you will see the number of hands that are raised. When someone calls in, star nine raises the hand. Um, and I believe that these instructions um, are carried through with each item that we see. However, um, clearly, if people are still not able to comment, then that is something we're going to have to look at. Um, and it is of paramount importance that the public be able to access these meetings. And I'd just say we've listed the, the, the manner to comment in multiple places on the agenda on our website. We've been doing, we've been doing, we trust me, we've been working really hard on this. So that feedback is very helpful. So the more feedback, the better, because we've been working honestly for our staff has worked really, really hard over the last four months to, or however many months it's been to really do as much as we can to give the time to comment. And it's not going to be a perfect system. So we're trying to get it as, as to make it improve it as we go along. So as hard as, as hard as we've worked to make it as, as complete and as extensive as possible, we can always try to improve and do better. So um, anything, 
any suggestions are great and and we'll keep on looking to see how we can improve that so thank you for those comments thank you with that uh, let's open public comment thank you madam president marcus Godoy again for the record caller 7804 you're unmuted Caller 7804, you're unmuted. May you unmute yourself, please? Caller 7804. For the person dialing in who wants to speak with the phone number that ends in 7804, we have given you permission to unmute yourself. Please unmute yourself at this time and give your public comment. Okay, Marcos, oh, let's move on. Will do. Caller Sam, you're unmuted. Hi, good morning. My name is Sopana Rat Sam and I work in Chinatown and I'm just calling on behalf of the Central City United community and according to the latest homeless count number, the city of LA has saw a 14% increase in homelessness with two thirds of the unsheltered experiencing homelessness for the first time in their lives. And our homelessness crisis is an affordability crisis. We believe that DCP needs to prioritize strategies to prevent homelessness, starting with more aggressive tenant protections. And we asked the commission to direct DCP to adopt the CCU people's plan, which includes a full range of tenant protection policies and programs, including a meaningful no net loss program. Thank you. Thank you. Caller R, you're unmuted. Hi, I would actually like to speak last time. I'm still driving. I apologize. We will come back to you. Thank you. Caller Allison, you're unmuted. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Allison Hom, NRDC's Access to Nature Fellow and a member of the Casitas Campaign. Southeast Asian Community Alliance, Friends of the LA River, and Natural Resources Defense Council are core members of the Casitas Campaign. This team has been working together for nearly two years in partnership with community members to fight displacement and gentrification. First, I'd like to flag ongoing issues with the Commission's public comment platform. It's much more accessible to those with laptops and those familiar with Zoom. Those who rely on the commission's call-in number often struggle to connect to the platform. We hope that everyone meaningfully considers this issue. Regarding the Casitas campaign's access to nature work, growing the momentum behind and plain investment in restoration of the LA River is spurring new private development and land speculation in river adjacent neighborhoods, exacerbating the affordable housing crisis and gentrification pressures. The Casitas campaign believes in ensuring equitable access to nature, parks, and the Ellie River for all Angelinos, and in development that responds to the actual needs of the communities in which they are built, not development that worsens existing needs or ignores the people um, already living there. We hope to see more community-driven development moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Caller Stephanie, you're unmuted. Hi, um, my name is Stephanie and I live in Lincoln Heights. I'm just calling because I think that these meetings are very inaccessible, especially because you all don't have any translation in Spanish, which I think is unfair in any other languages. So if you really want community members to speak up, then why aren't you providing those accesses to them? Also on how to use Zoom or other platforms as well. So that's all I wanna say. Thank you. Can someone please speak to the translation services that are available? Morning, this is Kevin Keller, Executive Officer. Um, just speaking in terms of the uh, comments about uh, accessibility. As you know, we are in a, a special period. We are holding our meetings telephonically. Uh, we do uh, request, and I think there was a comment about people not being able to dial in. Please bring those to our attention, uh, our uh, commission office uh, we have had a couple emails. We've been able to resolve most of those, but want to make sure we can direct people to our commission office if they are having problems dialing in or we're not called upon. 
In terms of translation, if we do receive advance notice, we do provide translation uh, via Zoom. We have, um, uh, you know, it's a little bit more difficult to do that. It may take some more time, but that still is an option. So if there is a, a desire for translation, we need to be notified. And I believe it's either 24 or 72 hours in advance, but we can provide those services as well to make sure our meetings are accessible. Thank you. Thank you. And also, um, Kevin, can you please tell people how they might contact our commission office? Let me actually invite Cecilia, if she's available, to share her email and phone number address so we can make sure we can follow up with anyone who had problems uh, dialing in and we're made aware of those issues. Cecilia? Definitely. Cecilia Lamas, for the record, good morning. Um, to address this concern in regards to translation or wanting a request in Spanish or any other language, um, we have a verbiage in Spanish on page two of our agendas uh, that let the public know if they need um, any type of translation, they can contact us at area code 213. 978-1300. They can email the City Planning Commission inbox at cpc at lacity.org, or they can actually email me directly if they wish to. My email is cecilia dot lamas at lacity.org, and I'll be more than happy to assist them. Thank you, Cecilia. Let's move on to the next public comment. Thank you. Caller 3158, you're unmuted. Caller 3158, please unmute yourself. And we may want to remind uh, the speakers of the process to unmute. I think they put down their hand. I'm gonna move forward. Caller Michael, please, I um, mean, you're unmuted. Good morning, Michael Atkins, you can hear me? Yes, we can, please Great. go ahead. Thank you, I'm calling uh, from Friends of the Los Angeles River. Uh, my colleague Allison just also left a comment about a broader coalition working in opposition to Casitas Laws. Uh, we're asking the city to reimagine access to nature as a promising and required solution to our current public health crisis, not as an amenity or luxury. Access to park space, nature provides comprehensive benefits to individuals and communities at large. For example, improved air quality. This is going to be a hot weekend, so lower heat levels, a resource for individual, invaluable community building, and connection, recreation opportunities, increased mental health, um, stronger communities. This is the opportunity that we have in the space that, along the river. Casitas laws, as currently proposed, is not aligned with meeting those objectives, especially uh, by including affordable units and by working not to displace those who are currently in the area. So I ask you to consider these, uh, all of these, as you continue to form uh, and practice time a uh, planning process. Thank you. Thank you. Denise Otero, for the record, caller Daniel Liu, you are unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Daniel Liu, and I work in Little Tokyo, and I'm calling on behalf of Central City United. It's evident that racial equity cannot be achieved without planned outcomes. The appointments of racial equity officers is not a planned outcome, but rather a process that does not inevitably guarantee long overdue racial justice. As community trust the city deteriorates through past empty promises, some of us may see this process as tokenism. Therefore, we, de we demand the community plan to further adopt CCU proposed policies to meet the dire needs of housing affordability. If not, racial justice will never be achieved in Los Angeles because nearly 365,000 renters will soon, be, will soon face evictions and homelessness. As Ibram Kendi stated, one either allows racial inequities to persevere as a racist or confronts racial inequities as an anti-racist. In what ways will DCP implement anti-racist policies for housing affordability and homelessness prevention? Thank you. Thank you. Call Denise, you're muted.
Caller 7804, you are unmuted. Staff, we appear to be having a problem with folks who are calling in when we ask them to unmute. I don't know that they know how to unmute themselves. Is there something that they can push on their phone to unmute themselves? Is there anyone available from Raul, staff? Um, from the commission office. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so if you're calling in by phone, once we um, unmute you, they should have the ability to just speak right then. It's if you're calling or speaking through the computer um, or signing in online, once we unmute you, you'll also have to um, unmute yourself. So it'll, you'll see a prompt that says the host would like you to unmute. Um, and so once you see that, you'll need to do one more click unmute on your side. So that should allow them to be able to speak. For the callers that are by phone, like I mentioned, as as soon as we unmute them, they should be able to speak, but we'll look into any issues if there's some more coming up. It appears what is happening is the callers, when I click on allow to talk or um, they are not able to speak. So let me try this again. Let's try caller 4818. For caller with the phone number ending in 4818. Please go ahead. When I clicked allow to speak, it did not unmute the caller. It now gives me an option to ask them to unmute, which I click, but they do not appear to be able to unmute themselves. Therefore, we are not able to hear from dial-in callers. Can staff please address this immediately? We will go to the Zoom public comments first, and then hopefully we will have this resolved for our dial-in callers. Thank you. Would staff like to do the calling or am I going to be running this? Cecilia Lamas for the record. Caller R, you are now unmuted. You may speak now. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes we, we can. can. Okay, can you let me know when my time starts so I can time myself? Now. Okay. Um, I am a resident and um, stakeholder in CD13. I'd like to start by saying that you are all murderers. You are murderers of communities and the unhoused folks of Los Angeles. We're leaving a worst case scenario with this pandemic and city planning has only worked towards worsening our chances of survival. What kept us ahead at the at the start of the pandemic was having less density than cities like New York, would have set us back on narrow-minded, careless people like those at city planning and city hall that continue to not consider the real world consequences of your decisions. Your position on what the people of the city need are grossly distorted by the mission of Mayor Garcetti, Mitch O'Farrell, and the rest of city council. Fighting the negligent decisions made and supported by hundreds of city planning staff at this commission is a full-time unpaid job, a job most Angelinos can't afford or even know how to take on. David Ambrose's past comments about the same people objecting to these projects are smug and dismissive. These objectors are the only ones that understand how every approval you and the city council make are chipping away at what's left of the quality of life of residents. We can't afford the large firms to represent us against you. And the handful of smaller firms that know how to fight you are Third stretched time. to their limits. Murderers. Thank you. Caller 4818, you are now unmuted. Cecilia, we appear to be having the same issue with our dial-in callers. Can we hear from the people on Zoom and can we be assured that someone is working on this issue on the back end to see why our callers cannot comment? And Cecilia Lamas, for the record, yes, Commissioner Millman, we are addressing the issue as we speak. Um, I will go ahead and move forward with the next caller. Thank you. Caller Josh Gray-Emmer, you are now unmuted. 
Thanks so much. I just wanted to say, uh, keep up the good work, commissioners. You are doing God's work, getting more housing built in Los Angeles. I know people are usually take the time to call in to get down on you guys, but I just wanted to lend my support to everything that you guys are doing. And I want to say that uh, this is great. Having Zoom allows more people across the city to voice their opinions about projects uh, rather than having to take time off of work and make it into an act actual um, hearing room at City Hall. So you guys are doing great work. Keep it up, work hard. Uh, the city is proud of you. Thank you. Caller Joel Miller, you are now unmuted. Oh, and Julie, I I'm sorry, I apologize. I accidentally raised my hand. No worries. Caller Aaron McNeil, you are now unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, my name is Aaron McNeil and I live in the city. And I just wanted to know, is there anything gonna be done about this transportation issue? Like, can we get more Metro rails, more bicycles, something? Because it's kind of frustrating that we don't have as many metros as we need to to get around. You have to do Ubers, and Ubers are way expensive. Thank you. Caller Casey Madrin, you're now unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Um, I want to say I was uh, very surprised when I looked at the agenda for today to find that the comment, the item I wanted to comment on, comment five, was on consent calendar, and there would be no discussion of that item. I emailed the city planning commission to find out how this policy was in a, how this policy was uh, applied, uh, how items are determined to be non non controversial, how they can be removed from the consent agenda, and I was merely told my comments would be forwarded to the commission. So I'd really like an explanation of how a, an agenda item of which there were people who opposed to it and who called in previously to comment and writ, send in uh, written comments, how this has been uh, removed uh, from the ability to comment today and uh, just how this uh, consent calendar evolved and uh, what are the policies, how can items be removed? Um, I'm very disturbed by this. It seems like another effort by the city to uh, cut out public comment and obviously with the problems on the phone today. Certainly the city has not resolved the issue in terms of uh, public engagement. So if someone could please address this, I'd appreciate it. Happy to Casey. So um, because you are here to comment on the item, the item will be pulled from the consent calendar. Anytime a member of the public shows up at one of our hearings wanting to speak on an item on the consent calendar, that automatically pulls the item from consent calendar. Um, similarly, if a commissioner has a question or concern about an item, it would also, they would also have the ability to pull it. But just to underscore the point, if we have members of the public who show up with concerns on an item on the consent calendar, that item is pulled from the consent calendar. So we will be pulling the item from the consent calendar so that you can voice your concerns. Similarly, um, there was a comment about uh, transportation. If staff could provide a link perhaps to Metro's website, which shows the build out of uh, our planned uh, transit lines, that would be appreciated. Thank you. Pilates with Devika, you are now unmuted. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we yes, can. We Please go ahead. Hi, I'm calling as a resident of Lincoln Heights. I'm calling about the 468 unit luxury development that's being imposed on us at Avenue 34, Pasadena Avenue. I'm going to stop you there. Um, we are not taking comment on that item at this time. When we call the item on the agenda, you will have the opportunity to speak on that item. So please bear with us. We're gonna hear a couple items first, and then you will have the ability to comment on that item when it is called. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, so what do they press for? Let's go. 
Okay, so this is Raul from the commission office again. Um, so if you're calling in, we'll unmute you. Um, but when you first raise your hand, you press star nine to raise your hand. And as a reminder, press star six to unmute. So once we tell you or announce that you're unmuted, um, please also press star six on your end. I think that should solve the issue. And then if I could just ask anybody who's also a co-host on here, if you could um, refrain from muting and unmuting, that way we don't get double unmuting or muting uh, as possible, much as possible. So we'll try starting with caller 4818, you're unmuted. So if you could press star six to unmute. So I think this caller actually may have a, a different issue on the phone. Let me try 2087, you're unmuted. Caller with the phone number two ending in 2087, please press star six and begin your comment. This is Kevin Keller, executive officer. If we have a comment, I don't want to interrupt. <clears throat> um, I think what we wanted to update the commission, we do have our uh, information technology internal help desk on the call. I might suggest without being disruptive that we also have a department dial in that we work with to, to uh, troubleshoot this and maybe take a minute when that's dialed in, we could all do our own call in and make sure we can press that star six and see if it works. Um, this is apparently a uh, issue with the platform at the moment. We are looking into it and I just wanted to give that update. So thank you uh, help desk for helping us at this moment. And um, Thank you, Raul, for continuing to uh, jump in. Um, perhaps we should take a few minutes of recess to get this figured out. I, I'm just not comfortable moving forward if people dialing in cannot make public comment. So let's take a five minute recess. The time is 9-11. We will reconvene at 9-16. Um, Enter your meeting ID followed by pound. You resolved. Thank you to the public for your patience with us this morning. Thank you. This is Kevin Keller to our commission staff. Let's go ahead and do some verbal testing. Your participant ID followed by pound. Let's start that. Otherwise,
This is Samantha Millman. Um, we were going to begin the commission hearing now, but it looks like we're still working through this issue. So we will stay in recess for another five minutes. Thank you so much to the public for your patience. Um, obviously, we want to resolve this issue so that we can hear from you. It is not acceptable for us to not be able to take public comment. For those who are waiting in silence, um, I just want to remind you that we are in recess while we are working out a technical issue and uh, hopefully we will reconvene shortly. Thank you. Good morning. If you're a member of the public who just dialed in and is wondering why you're hearing silence, we are here. We are working through a technical issue. Um, we hope to reconvene shortly once it is resolved. Uh, in the meantime, please hang tight. We will be with you as soon as possible. Thank you.
Good morning again. I just want to thank everyone for their patience. Um, please bear with us. We are still trying to work through this issue, but we are working hard to resolve it. Obviously, taking public comment is one of the major functions of this commission and we take it seriously. So we are working very hard to resolve this issue this morning so that everyone can participate. Um, again, please bear with us as we work through this technical difficulty and we look forward to hearing from you shortly. You will hear silence on the line while we're working to resolve the issue. It does not mean that the meeting is not happening. Um, it's just that we're, again, working through this issue. Thank you so much for your patience.
Good morning, everyone. I have an update. We are going to take a recess until 10 a.m., at which point I hope to reconvene with our uh, audio fully functioning and callers able to give public comment. I want the public to rest assured that if we cannot resolve this issue today, we will not move forward with the hearing in a manner that excludes people from public comment. So please give us the next 30 minutes to try to resolve this issue because we very much look forward to hearing from you. Um, and in the meantime, my deepest apologies to everyone for this delay. Thank you so much for your patience. And uh, hopefully I will see you in 30 minutes with good news. Thank you so much.